What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And last night's game against the Cincinnati Bengals basically went according to plan to me. Like, I didn't think the Jags were going to win this game. I thought that the storyline was set up perfectly for Joe Burrow to get his first NFL win. However, the Jaguars had some woes in this game. Now, I didn't get to do a... Um, position grades players of the week for the Miami game but I would have been really harsh on those guys but you know this is going to be the first video of me being really really harsh on the Jacksonville Jaguars so without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals week number four recap position grades and players of the week now let's kick things off how we usually do and talk about the offensive side of the ball now the offense is better than it has been in Jacksonville Jaguar past. I will say that consistently, and I will always say that. But there are still some, you know, some woes there. There are still some some tragedies there. Like this team puts up 25 points, but it's not enough. And we're going to really kind of dismantle this defense once we get to the defensive side of the ball. But there are some promise on, on this offense. But there are still some inconsistency issues at the quarterback position. And that's why we're going to be giving the quarterback, Gardner Minshew, a C on the day. Two back-to-back, -back, really not that impressive performances. He went 27 for 40, 351, two touchdowns and a pick. His touchdown that he threw to DJ Chark was a really, really good throw. Was this Minshew, was this like a terrible game to the point where you can say Gardner Minshew is a garbage NFL quarterback? You know, he's Blake Bortles' status of just being a guy that Jaguar fans like to defend? No, I don't think so. But as the season progresses and you see how this team is going, is the tank for Trevor Talk getting back to where it should be? It probably is. Unfortunately for Minshew, he's a good quarterback. You know, Washington State, Jags fan, you follow this channel for a while, you know I'm a big Gardner Minshew guy. And I think he has, through four weeks, you know, kind of, he's doing his part to be a Jaguars quarterback. He's doing his part to be a leader for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I just think, unfortunately for him, with the team that he has around him, it's just going to overshadow what he has done. And it's going to be, you know up for debate because I think as of right now the Jags are probably gonna have a top five draft pick and you know right there you talk about what are the Jaguars gonna do in a top five draft pick situation do you address the quarterback in that situation I don't know I think that there are still a lot of glaring issues on the defensive side of the ball some players some with the coaching aka Todd Wash still can't believe that man has a job still cannot get over that but I think that's more of an important fix that the Jaguars need to address. And I think, you know, more of that's going to come into free agency, possibly. But I think as far as, like, targets around the field, you know, the offensive line, I think this offense is, you know, it's, it, it's getting there. It's getting formed and it's getting developed and, you know, meshing together. And these guys are only going to get better and better. And that's why I would almost hesitate to even try and get another quarterback this year unless you do have the number one overall pick. And, then, you know, that pick is Trevor Lawrence. I don't know. But I wasn't really impressed with Minshew this this week. Um, I think Joe Burrow outplayed him. But, again, you know, I think if Gardner Minshew went up against the Jags defense, then, you know, Minshew would really shine. You know, it's just – I think I think we just we just make – we make we make studs. And, you know, today was Joe Burrow's coming out party, and, and he played well. But, again, Minshew going 27 for 40, 351. Uh, yards, two touchdowns, and one pick. That one pick was kind of unfortunate, obviously, you know, tipped in the air. And uh, the Bengals were able to pick that off. But, yeah, I'm going to have to give Gardner a C on the day. Um, definitely, he has, his worst game was against Miami. But, you know, definitely, definitely one of his worst games uh, thus far this season. Now let's talk about the wide receivers. And the wide receivers, I think, is a group that we should continuously praise and we should continuously say, uh, good things about DJ Chark, man. Uh, he came back and he was a difference maker. I mean, I didn't think, you know, it, it, a lot of people in the Jaguars community and a lot of people are really high on DJ Chark. You know, I am too. I think DJ Chark's an amazing football player. I think he's the best receiver that the Jags have. 
But I didn't think the Jaguars were going to miss him as much as they did in the Miami game. But they really did. And then, you you know, the difference showed. You know, when DJ Chark's out there, the uh, more confidence that Minshew has, the more that these other wide receivers get to open up. You know what I mean? So, uh, DJ Chark had a fantastic game. And between him, Keelan Cole, and LaVisca Chennault, man, that is a good, solid foundation for your three wide receivers. I mean, you, you go and you talk to any other regular NFL fan, they probably will disagree with you. But these are guys that Gardner has built chemistry with and three guys that are going to be, you know, reliable. Three guys that are going to be reliable members of the receiving room. And, you know, Keelan Cole, if you would have said that after last year, that he is going to be, you know, a positive, you know, contributor to this offense. I think we all would have said you're crazy. But Keelan Cole currently uh, leads the Jaguars in receiving yards, I believe. And and he has been, you know, one of Gardner Minshew's go-to targets. So he's definitely contributed, and him and Chark and LaVisca Chenault, who I want to talk about too for a little bit, he is a star in the making, and if we can get Chark and Chenault for years, and that could be our receiving duo, lock them down. Like, <laughs> make sure you lock those two down, because that could be a really good receiving duo for a lot of years. And LaVisca Chenault, week in and week out, has proven that he has the potential to be a superstar, and I'm very excited to see where his career takes him, and I'm very excited to see what he does in black and teal. Another very impressive week. He does so well after the catch, and... There's just not enough that you can say about this young man. He plays exceptionally well. He did go down in this game. Um, he uh, hobbled off the field. And uh, there's a lot of injuries in this game. You know, a lot of injuries. And as of right now, I don't really have an injury update to give on anybody. So, you know, hopefully he's okay. We do need LaVisca Chenault and we need him bad. So, I'm hoping he's alright. Next up, we're going to talk about the offensive line. The offensive line, Cam Robinson went down. They gave up a sack. But, you know, there's there's times where Minshew really panics. And this is kind of another knock on Minshew here. There's times Minshew panics in the pocket when he doesn't really need to. You know what I mean? Like, it, it seems like there's a clean pocket for Minshew that he could kind of just, you know, step up into and just kind of, you know, go through his progressions. But he's always just kind of scrolling out, rolling out. And, you know, trying to... He looks kind of scared sometimes. But I think this offensive line has done way better. Way better than expected. And this was another case of that. They did give up the sack, but... I mean, for what they have done in the run game... I mean, opening up holes for James Robinson. You know, making sure that Minshew, for the most part, is untouched for all season. I mean, Andrew Norwell and A.J. Can, bro. This is A.J. Can's best season that he has put together. You know, when you're not talking about a guy... Like, at all, like, really? <laughs> like, you know, as an offensive lineman, that you're doing your job. And we haven't bitched or complained about A.J. Can all season. So you know for a fact that that man's doing his job. Like, the offensive line, I think, for the most part, is built. And it is it's going to be solid. And, again, this is going to be this is going to be a tough, tough thing to do and a tough, weird thing to see uh, what the Jaguars kind of do in the draft if... You know, they end up do getting, if they do get that high draft pick, because, you know, right now, one and three, it's looking like the Jaguars are going to, you know, be be brought down the totem pole a little bit. And speaking of a guy that was a diamond in the rough, oh, by the way, we're going to be giving the uh, wide receivers a B. I, I totally kind of scroll over that. The wide receivers get a B, and the offensive line get a B as well. Now we're going to be talking about a diamond in the rough find in running back. James Robinson, and boy, oh boy, is this kid fun to watch. Um, you know, I talk about getting a Jags jersey is a bad investment, but I mean, I think that, like, if I'm going to get a Jags jersey next, I mean, it's between him and Miles Jack. I think Miles Jack, like I said, he's he's had a great season so far, but I really like James Robinson. I think James Robinson might be the jersey I'd have to get because he is playing really, really good football right now. I mean, it's night and day from how him and Leonard Fournette used to run the ball. Leonard Fournette, I mean, is obviously just a downhill runner, takes the ball, you know, he knows what hole he has to hit and he hits it. But James Robinson, you know, the vision is there, you know, the speed through the hole is there as well. And, you know, James Robinson right now is probably the best player on the Jaguars offense, at least the most important piece. I mean, this guy, you know, can run the ball. And there were times in this game where it just it seemed like, you know, they, they went away from the run game. And I think that's another 
reason why men's shoes, you know, getting some knocks this week and getting kind of brought down a peg a little bit is because you had Gardner throw the ball 40 times. You shouldn't have Gardner throw the ball 40 times, and I know that that's a lot to do with the defense, you know, letting the Bengals kind of run wild and take a big lead, but, you know, try and stick to the run game as much as you can, in my opinion. Like, that's that's just my opinion. I think James Robinson is the guy to do that, and he had a excellent game as well. So the overall grade for the offense, we're going to be giving them a C plus. So Gardner Minshew got the lowest grade um, of the day for the offensive players. So instead of just getting the solid B, I decided to say, okay, it's going to be like a 79, 78% C plus for the offense. Now let's talk about that dumpster fire of a defense. All right, so let's talk about this defense. This defense is god awful, terrible, like the worst Jaguars defense I have seen in a long, long time, obviously, because, you know, the Saxonville defense era ran wild for a bit. But, no, this is bad. Like, it's very bad. Like, the scheme's bad. Most of the players are bad or underperforming. I mean, you look at it, C.J. Henderson, dog. He's hurt, though. He's one of the better players. But, you know, after that, the depth doesn't really get there. Miles Jack having a career here, looking really good. I think Joe Schobert is another great player. Um, he's just not playing up to expectations. And that's a lot of the players that the Jaguars have. They're not playing up to expectations. Mostly on the defensive line, which is what we're going to be talking about first. And I think it is time to kind of admit that this defensive line is not just having, like, like a bad year. I don't know. I don't even know. What I was trying to give them some excuses, like, oh, it's still early. I think it's just time to say, like, they are not getting to the quarterback plan and simple. I mean, there is an argument to be made, and I will agree with you if you made this argument. Todd Wash doesn't bring more than four. That's just facts. He just does it. But, you know, <laughs> you, you have these guys out there, and these are your four that you want to bring pressure with, and they have three sacks on the season. They have less sacks than there has been weeks on the year. You have Josh Allen, who's coming off of a fucking excellent rookie campaign, and he can't even breathe on a quarterback. It's just, it's completely night and day from last year, and it's it's terrible. It's not good. Not good at all. So we're going to be giving the defensive line an F. And especially when Joe Mixon runs wild, you can't breathe on Joe Burrow. They, they're going to get the first F that I've given out all season. And that's going back now to the linebackers. The linebackers kind of misplayed some reads on Joe Mixon when he's running the ball. Miles Jack had that really athletic interception. That was fun. That was cool. You know, like, that was awesome. Like, that was cool to watch. But, I mean, Schobert and Miles Jack are really kind of just carrying this defense right now. Those are the two guys that are the leaders on the defense, and those are the two guys that are the best players on the defense, bar none. I mean, they are the best players on the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. And, you know, right now no one's really playing up to par with them. And, you know, it's unfortunate because, you know, you wish more for them. So I'm going to be giving them a C plus. And then finally, the defensive backs without C.J. Henderson are complete and utter dog shit. The DBs in the defensive line is bad, really bad, like really, really, really bad. Like it's hard to even, like with C.J. Henderson gone, you know, you've really seen it. Like it's hard to find one shining light in that secondary. Like who, who are you going to say, like, hey, but that guy, no. No, Clay Brooks? I fucking hate Clay Brooks. He fucking sucks. He's still on the fucking roster, though. And he got some extended playing time at, you know, playing defensive back last night. It sucks. This defense sucks. Like, there's no if ands, or buts about it. Like, you know, the offense, you know, you have some guys there, and you're like, hey, they have potential. They're fun to watch. This defense is not fun to watch. This defense, like, it's basically like watching an offense that you're playing practice. Like, it's like they're going up against air. Like, it's just complete. 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 Oh, look at that. Another completion. Look at that. 15-yard run. 20-yard run. Like, it's just, it's embarrassing. It's bad. It's not good. And, you know, the Jaguars are going to continue to give up as many points as they do. They're not, they're not winning again. <laughs> they ain't winning for the rest of the season. Especially, you know, playing teams like Baltimore, Green Bay. Like, how do you expect to win those games? I sure as shit don't. I don't know how you could. He couldn't even make a case for me. So the DBs are going to be getting a D. 
And overall, this defense is going to be getting an F. Get better. Fire Todd Wash. Get some more talent on the field. Like, do something. Because right now, it is just terrible. It is a dumpster fire. And nobody wants to watch the Jaguars play because of it. Now, it's my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week, Players of the Week. And this one is a hard one, but we do it anyway. Uh, for offense, I'm going to give it to DJ Chark. DJ Chark on his first game, bat, well, his game off of injury, he played well, caught a touchdown pass, and, you know, really showed why he's the number one receiver. And, uh, you know, I was close to giving it to Visca, but, you know, more yards and a touchdown pass for DJ Chark. So, got to give it to the boy, Chark. But Visca right behind him, and probably James Robinson in as the third option there. Uh, for Offensive Player of the Week. As for the defense, that's even more hard, but I think it's, you know, it's going to be a common trend. This guy's probably going to win all the Defensive Players of the Week, and that's Miles Jack. Miles Jack, from when he made the switch to the uh, weak side linebacker, that's just, he has free range right now, and he can play however he wants. He can play downhill, and he can make plays, and that's what he does. So, you know, the position change helps him a lot, and that's why he's going to continuously get probably Players of the Week awards. Next week, we got Houston. Battle for the bottom of the AFC South. Will the Jaguars win and improve to 2-3? and three? Or will they lose and go to 1-4 and four and then the bottom of the AFC South? And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals. Week number four. Recap, player grades, and positions of the week. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook. At Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter. At Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you're notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.